Okay, I am so heartbroken right now, dude. I just went on the most heartfelt rant of my life. Not my life, but oh, I, it was so like I was just saying beautifully the things that were on my mind. I had such great enthusiasm, and it wasn't filming the video. It just did it again. It just turned itself. Off. What the fuck? This fucking camera. What is going on, dude? You know what? Screw this. I, I'll see you guys at the. I'm gonna go work out. Um, I'm gonna enjoy this beautiful view. I'm not gonna let this ruin my mood. Um, I just was filming. Life is beautiful. Uh, a little rant. I basically just told about my day yesterday. Um, yeah, this camera's. I, I'm gonna be at the house. Sorry, I lied. Okay, so I remembered pretty much a lot. Of, hope this is filming. I remembered a lot of what I was saying. Okay, so I was saying, because I looked at the video and it stopped and I was at the red light. So, I started saying that I, um, if I surround myself with grandeur, like things that are grand, like things that fill you with awe, like things just awe-inspiring. Oh, I hope I don't pop my tires right now. Um, if I surround myself with beauty constantly and only the best of the best of the best art and creativity how can I expect to not put that back out there you know what I mean because art is basically like you take in information and it's your way of expressing how you're putting it out damn I look so goofy right now okay I'm gonna face this way so that I don't see myself because I'm too distracted you know what I mean um but like if I am only consuming oh like I was saying in a other video if I am what I eat literally like what I put my body is what creates my body as an artist and as a creative you are what you consume and so I've been reading so many different Wikipedia articles um, about like like Childish Gambino Tyler's creator uh, Kendrick Lamar Mac Miller Logic MF Doom and then like other creatives like Matthew McConaughey just like so many different people and consuming their life stories and how they did what they did to kind of get a better grasp and it, it's really awesome actually but it's like if you go on my safari tab you can put bookmarks I have like 200 that you can scroll through um, I have I've only read like 20 of them but um, I, I just been I've been reading those and it, it's just it's so cool because it's like when I'm surrounding myself with that I slowly become that you know what I mean and like I was saying in the last video is I can see myself being where I want to go and I can see slowly the, the path is becoming more and more clear obviously I don't know the path because I can't predict the future but I can see it happening which to me means it's going to happen so it's like I'm really excited because I'm like I can't wait for that but at the same time it makes me really happy that I'm still in the process because it's like dude I'm enjoying the journey so much right now like doing these videos is so fun to me like bulking up getting stronger learning reading consuming tons of information and to be the most intellectual and strong person physically and mentally just everything becoming well-rounded spiritual everything it's beautiful and then in the video that cut off I started reading uh, this page and it was saying Haters are the perfect critic because they hate to see you succeed. So when you are succeeding, or even when you have little tweaks of failures, they point it out. So it's like, they're giving you the exact information you need to be even better. So it's like, I wish I had vocal haters. I probably have haters, but I, they're not saying anything yet. Um, who knows, everybody's got haters, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Um, but it's like confidence. This also made me think about confidence. If you're trying something new, like style like if you're trying a new outfit or something that is completely different from what you normally do but you're excited about it and you feel confident with it like when you're alone but then when you go into public or like when you go in front of some people that you care about you kind of feel like incredible anxiety and you're like shit should i wear this right now like i'm gonna go change and just keep doing what i normally do like you're trying to go back into your comfort zone and so it's like when you feel confident and you like it uh and you're getting mixed opinions that is probably a sign that it looks good and it adds character to you. Like, it's showing more who you are. And like my dad was saying, is like, how you dress directly correlates with how you are as a person. Like, you're just expressing who you are within clothing. Like, you know what I mean? And um, that was basically, that was basically that. And then also, nobody says no to back rubs. 
and it was kind of, I was, just, I was at church, and there was this grandma back room and this teen, and I was like, nobody, if somebody starts rubbing your back, like, that you know, of course, not like a random stranger, but you're not going to say no, you're going to be like, oh, oh, this is nice, and it's the same thing with, like, nobody's going to say no to being, uh, to someone being kind to them, nobody's going to say no to generosity, and it's like, why not just embody that and be that for people, you know what I mean, and also, oh, okay, closing the conversation, this is what I ranted about for like 10 minutes. Oh, I have to remember this whole thing. So closing the conversation um, is similar to walking the customer in car sales. Walking the customer is basically, you were with a customer for like an hour or two, you picked out a car, you did a walk around, you took them on a test drive, you built rapport, and then they're like, I'm gonna think about it, and then they walk. And letting the customer walk is when you're like, okay, well have a great day, here's my business card. Like, no, you're, they're not shopping, you're selling them a car. And so managers would get really pissed whenever I walk customers, which I did a lot. And one of the best things I learned from that job about myself is that I would close the conversation a lot. Like when you say hi, like when you're having small talk with someone, I would be the person to be like, all right, well, it was great to see you. I'll see you uh, some other time. And I realized that. I'm like, wow, like here I am ranting about how I love conversation. And I'm the one who's like closing my abilities and limiting myself. And I, I realized that a lot, that I do that a lot. Um, and it's, it's something I got to work on, but like yesterday, uh, I was walking past my work and while we were in downtown thrifting and I said all, hi to all my coworkers. And then this girl that obviously likes me, um, she's the new girl. Uh, she came out around from behind the corner. She's like, oh, Enzo, what the hell did you get here? And I was like, Hey, what's up? And like, we had small talk and stuff and everybody like left and I was like, Oh shit. And then, um, um, so we just started chatting it up a little bit and she was like, I don't want to sound romantic or like private, but she was like lost in my eyes and like wasn't giving me any, like she was not there in the conversation. She was just like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, bro. <laughs> and I was like, give me information to talk about. Like I was trying to get information out of her and she wasn't giving me anything. She was just giving me like, yes, but it wasn't like, like, yeah, yeah. It was like, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like she was being very uh, surface level conversation. And so I just kind of like left. <laughs> I just I closed the conversation and I was like, damn it, I should have like tried harder. But that's just something I've realized. It's like being the person to stop the conversation instead of letting that silence come. And maybe in that five seconds of silence, they bring something up that they wanted to say. So it's like you're limiting yourself when you end a conversation. You know, obviously there's some situations where you, it's it's appropriate, but yeah. All right, if this didn't record audio, I'm gonna be so mad. But I will see you in the gym, and then I'm gonna work on the farm and get extra tan. Let's go. <laughs> oh man, okay. So this is like the second video for today. Um, but it's also a catch up video from the whole weekend. I had a ton of things to talk about. And I just didn't have the chance. Well, I had the chance, but I was looking a little bit lazy. Um, also, for workout today, um, I'm really sore from last night. I did chest, and I absolutely annihilated my chest with Ethan. And I also deadlifted like 400, or almost got a 405 deadlift. Technically 395. I don't really know which one it was. <sighs> um, Ethan left this huge deadlift right here. Actually, you know what? No, nah, I don't want to mess up my back. But, um, yeah, I'm just going to do some brachialis work because I noticed mine's really small. And then also, um, I was thinking about doing a uh, ab workout and then also dips because this thing was set out and I didn't even set it up. So, I'm just going to do it myself and see how I feel about it because it's already 5 o'clock right now and I'm supposed to go to the gym right after this. So, I'm going to get a quick warm-up basically and then go to the gym and hit, hit really good workout. So, yeah, let's get right into it. Cue the uh, 2016 trap music beat uh, intro with all the glowy letters, like the All right, anyways, I'm tweaking. Um, let's get this workout, bro. Oh my God, I'm so happy to be back. I love this, to be back in uh, Let's see, is this, this feel all right? Let's see, back on uh, the holy grounds in God's country, in this farmland garage. 
Um, but yeah, basically, I'm working out, since my hand is at the neutral grip, I'm working out, it's called the brachialis of the bicep. So there's three parts of the bicep. There's the brachialis, which is connected to the forearm. So it's basically on the side, in between the tricep and the bicep. And there's a long head, and then there's a short head. I forgot which one's which, to be honest. But the brachialis is basically using your forearm to squeeze this little ball. And mine's really small. And it looks cool when it's grown big. So I noticed I was watching a movie with Woody Harrelson in it called Planet of the Apes. And his brachialis was popping out. And I was like, that looks cool. And I was like, I need to grow mine. Because I realized how much I've been neglecting them. So here I am. And uh, I've got a lot of thoughts for today. I need to get better at intros. But, dude, I have literally my whole life to make these videos. So I'm gonna get better with time. But as for now, I'm just doing my thing, man. I'm just being myself. <sighs> Slowly, patiently, incrementally, and naturally, I'm skill stacking to be able to make music. I wrote this on the way home from last workout when I was here. So I think it was Friday. I pulled over on the side of the road and I was like, well, what does that mean? I'm like, well, oh my goodness. A year and a half ago, I found my passion for writing and journaling. And then I started having fun just doing freestyle raps with all the boys. I've been doing that since I was like 14. We used to be behind a fire. Everybody would be like, mm, 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 mm. and then we would go in a circle and then take turns, keep going. Anyway, freestyling and learning rhyme. And then I started playing around with instruments. And then uh, I have the passion for intricacy, so things that have a lot of like gets deeper and deeper like at the end of my life I want my life to be like look back and like it'd be a puzzle for people to figure out and to have like a hidden thing or something I don't know um, I have a passion for creativity passion for sound and uh, also understanding beats and song structure like I'm starting to understand that and I'm teaching myself and then practice writing songs and poems and then lastly, the ability to absorb info by studying my idols and translate into self-expression uh, with like journaling and now doing video journal. And then next, who knows will be the next project. Hopefully I'll start making skits and then start making little raps and then making parodies and such and then like meme songs and then maybe an actual album and then who knows from there. Just let it play its natural course and then also do comedy and then get into acting after that that's kind of the game plan but we'll see what happens but basically it's just like I can slowly see bit by bit I'm being patient and I'm gaining the experiences I need to be able to back up learning how to make music and I'm like starting to realize and it's like now that I'm working towards it I can totally see it happening so it's cool you know what I mean? Man, this shit burns. I look so stupid. <laughs> um, I actually got out a lot of thoughts for today. I'm going to keep going for a while right here with this because it's pretty lightweight. But just right now, I spent like an hour and a half on the top of the hill with Ethan. We just ate our lunch. And uh, this morning, we built... Um, the rest of the driveway, we used a tractor to take a bunch of dirt out and we built like a little, like Ethan built a little wood thing that we turned into basically a garden bed on the side. We're going to put rocks on the side of it and it's basically a lifted up garden bed on the side. We're going to put, um, plants inside of that. And that's the driveway for the Airbnb, which we put a bunch of gravel on it once we leveled it out and then I took the compactor and then made it all flat and, uh, basically built the whole driveway. I'll show it afterwards. Um, and we haven't done any work on the MG, um, on the MGTD, the project car we are working on for anybody else who's new to these videos. I'm basically, I don't really care that I'm making these videos for myself and my Nana. What's up, Nana? How you doing? Um, whew, and to, trail off what's the word for this i don't know carry off that last thought it's only a matter of time and i was thinking i was like 
by 25, I'll be very skilled and have the skills to be able to do what I creatively imagine. But it's like right now I have, I'd lack the ability to be able to translate it and express it. You know what I mean? So it's like, I want to make music and write songs, but I'm completely unable to make them. And it's like, but by 25, I guarantee it would be happening. So, um, okay. Yeah. Fame at a local level is kind of like, I was thinking about that and it was like, I don't know why people chase fame so much, like myself included. It's like, you can literally be famous within your community. And even like, if you think about it, like when you're a kid, fame is just like the people you see the most and you admire the most. So it's like, you could like barely ever see your grandparents, but it's like to them, they're like famous people to like a little kid. Cause it's like, you barely ever see them. It's awesome when they're around and it's like, or another example, you go to church and there's one dude that you recognize but you've never talked to and it's like you see him all over the place and it's like that's kind of fame is like somebody you repeatedly see um all over the place and you never i don't know how to put it into words but i understand it myself but that's all that matters because these videos are basically for myself or so i tell myself i think i might be convincing myself that but secretly wanting more people to see these <laughs> um what else I like want to get through all these thoughts ASAP. Um, oh yeah, I'm about to make it. <laughs> I just, I can totally, I was saying in the last video this morning, it was like, I can see where I want to go and I'm starting to actually see the path towards it. And I'm like, holy shit, if I can envision it, it's possible. Like how Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger says, and it's like, like bro like if you can envision it you can do it and it's like if other people have done it you can do it and it's like wow like i'm actually gonna make it it's gonna be this is sick like this is so cool like it's actually gonna happen <laughs> um what else <sighs> so many different thoughts some of these don't even make sense like what the hell is time what the hell are movies like what comfort in being vulnerable oh on this like in these videos I'm very vulnerable. I'm putting my entire thoughts and everything out on these videos, but I love it. But it's like, I'm comfortable with being very vulnerable. Um, and I'm trying to breed that more so that I can be the truest I can be in the most artistic way. Because art is literally just an expression of the internal and how you like um, translate the external. And if I can be more vulnerable and be more comfortable with that, less things are holding me back from fulfilling my potential as an artist. Um, and I'm on my way. I don't have any projects yet. I'm only 19 right now. I don't have any things in my portfolio or whatever. But I'm getting there. You don't get what you don't work towards. So I'm a, it's only a matter of time, bro. Um, party anxiety. What day was it? I think it was Friday. There was a party I went to with Ethan and Frank and um, what else? Yeah, obviously I was intoxicated and it was like, it was very rare. Like I want it to be very clear. Like I felt like I earned it cause it was like my first party in like a year. And I worked at Ford for five months. I got myself out of debt. I made a big amount of savings and that here I am taking that savings. I'm not wasting my life. I'm working towards things. I was like, you know what? I think I can afford one night off. Um, and it was like, I learned through that, through being like high. I was like, wow, I look, you have like a comedy brain. Like <laughs> my, my brain is completely oriented around comedy. Like everything is jokes. Like I'd be in a situation and different jokes would be going into my head and I'd be judging which one's better. And then sometimes I'd say it, sometimes I'd not. And I was like, Literally everything <laughs> was just trying to be a comedian. And I was like, wow, like I'm trying to be I'm trying to make people laugh. And I was like, okay, I should probably do something about that. Um, so that's another thing. Anytime I'm doing something, there's a purpose behind it. I'm not just doing it for fun or to escape. It's like I was, especially with marijuana or weed. It's like, I do it because not only is it like spiritual, but because I want to learn more about myself. And doing that, I learn more about myself. And I'm like, okay, cool. I, I learned what I needed to learn. Like, it's, I'm cool. I don't need to do that again. I mean, right now. 
I mean, it's a rare occasion I'll do that. Like, life is too short to take it so seriously. And also, like, like to be the perfect child of, oh, he never gets intoxicated. He never this, this, this. Like, bro, literally, like, if you think about it, everybody's parents are constantly, like, drunk all the time. <laughs> like, everybody's parents are drinking and, like, at parties and stuff in front of the kids. Like, parents are always drinking beer and stuff and, like, and getting intoxicated. I'm like... Like, intoxication is, like, one of the pleasures of life. It's just, like, when it's not in moderation, it's bad. <laughs> um, and also, being vulnerable. Like, I'm not afraid to talk about that. Um, facts are facts. Why suppress that and avoid that and be scared of what? I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And I have reason behind it and I have morals behind it. So, if I'm, like I said, if I'm always following my intuition, I have nothing to regret. So, um, but you always have to be careful though, because there's things that can go wrong. Uh, oh, 1000 unfinished thoughts. That's like literally my brain. I never finish my thoughts, which is kind of why I do this is because I think them through in words, whereas in my head, it's kind of like, I just stop the thought immediately. And that's why I'm still having this problem of mid sentence. I'll start another thought. And it's like an unfinished thought because I was mid thought with one thing. And then I like, before here's the top finishing the thought here's the bottom i'd go halfway and then cut into a different one and so it's like i'm screwing myself over um it's apparent that i tend to be self-centered and not mindful of others like dad word working um that one was much easier to understand in the moment basically like i've realized i am very self-centered like um i'm i tend to be very lazy and uh, if somebody else is requiring something, like, of me, I'm, like, I complain about it. I don't do as much anymore, but I put up a fight. Like, body language, not so much words, or, like, just don't do it. Like, with dishes at home, I just don't do the dishes. And it's, like, I'm concerned with myself only rather than what helps everyone else. And I need to get over that because that's a very bad quality to keep growing with. And the sooner I can get it out of my system, the better, because if I grow up, the older I get, it's kind of like you can't teach an old dog new tricks. It's like, you, it's really hard to get rid of bad habits when you're, when you're older. And they just, they grow within you. And they become like a, a deadly disease. They just they just expand. Like I feel like adulthood is basically everything from childhood on an extreme level. And just exaggerated. Like if you really loved nature as a kid and you were exposed to a lot of nature as an adult, you're gonna be really in love with nature and like go camping a lot and stuff, you know what I mean? So, um, there's that. Um We can't get better without practice. Like, duh. So it's like, don't postpone the first failure. With practicing, you're always going to fail. Like, if you're trying to learn a song on the piano, you're going to press the wrong key. So don't postpone that. It's an easy example. But it's like, even in business, I was just talking with Ethan on top of the hill. Like, we were talking, I was like, bro, like, I've had like four or five businesses in my life. Like, even back in like fourth grade, I used to make slime and fidget spinners out of like homemade materials and sell them and I was like I had to fail a bunch and then that business failed because it got shut down by the school because it was too profitable and they were I was taking kids lunch money <laughs> um but I was I was realizing I was so smart with it because everybody else figured out how to make their own slime and stop buying from me I was like how do I stay above this like uh demand not surge what's the opposite of that drop um so I like I went and made magnetic magnetic slime which nobody had and that I gained business again. So it's like, I've always been entrepreneurial. Um, and like my first actual business completely failed. I had zero customers. I put like 500 bucks into it, which was a power washing business. And it was like, I failed multiple times, but it's like, you have to get over those failures because what you fail with is what you learn. And that's what gets you better. And that's what leads you to your success. Like nobody can hit first try. And when you do, it's hard to do it again. And that's why like people will win and then like lose it all like the lottery is because they don't know how to actually 
earn it. You know what I mean? It's easy to earn it. It's hard to keep it, let alone grow it. Um, perfect child. I already talked about that. Like, uh, what the fuck is life without getting in trouble sometimes and living? Um, nobody knows how to be themselves at that age. Oh, so at that party, that's all the thoughts for today, by the way. But at that party, Ethan, um, was also, oh, yo, my stepbrother Ethan was also intoxicated. And, um, he was really being himself, but also like, he's, he's always just completely being himself. But it was so funny because there was this girl that was really, really wanting him. And he completely was rejecting her, like, probably ten times. And it was just, like, he was just being himself. And he's like, I'm, I don't care. And it was funny because she was beautiful, but he didn't care because he's just being himself. And it was just, like, I was talking to my coworker at work the next day. And he was, like, he's 34 or 36, my coworker. And he's, like, dude, that's crazy. Nobody knows how to be themselves at that age. And it was, like, it really stood out to me. I was, like, nobody does know how to be themselves at my age. Like, <clears throat> Everybody's putting on a fake facade and not, they're just trying to be people pleasers and trying to be, trying to fit in, trying to get people to like them. And so that just, that really stood out to me. This is going to be my last set. Yeah, so you can see right here, this little ball. So there's a shoulder, bicep, tricep, and there's a little ball right there in between the two. And it's the brachialis that I'm trying to grow. On this side, you can see a lot better. Right there. Tricep, bicep, shoulder, brachialis, forearm. Oh, I can't wait to go to the gym tonight. I love going to the gym. It's so nice. Especially when nobody's there. I like don't like people, which is why I don't want to be famous, I've come to realize. But like I said, I'll say it again. If being famous and rich is the consequence of me doing what I love, then so be it. I'm gonna do what I love no matter what. But I tell you what, I'm not gonna do what other people love. Rather the idea of what people love, like working in a cubicle. Fuck that. Sorry, Nana, for my profanity. What is on my arm, bro? I can see it in the reflection. It doesn't look right. Alright, one last super set. Let's go to this 25. I do be looking beefy. That's sick. Yeah. yeah I'm so pissed because I look like I'm on a cut and I'm trying to bulk. Goats outside are going crazy. The ants burns. Ah. Yeah, my chest day yesterday was crazy. Like, I full on had cleavage. It was insane. Oh. Life is so beautiful. Oh, last bit of update. When Ethan and I were talking on the hill, like I was hinting at earlier, we were talking about like what we're gonna do once we achieve our first goals. Because like I'm on track to hit all of my goals this year. Like probably a lot sooner than I think. <laughs> but pardon me. And I think I read them this morning, but it didn't film. 
but whatever. Um, whew, when we both have 10K cash each, when we first hit it, we're both, we're like, what are we going to get? <laughs> like as a reward. Cause like, we got to treat ourselves, bro. We're taking like no days off. Um, and I was like, well, I didn't know what I'm going to get. I'm going to get some Birkenstocks for myself and for him or for him and for me. We're going to get the sandal ones because Ethan has those, my stepbrother. And they're so nice. I really want one. Um, and then also, Ethan and I are both going to get bulletproof weighted vests because we're like, why not? <laughs> but I've wanted a weighted vest forever because I feel like they look so cool. And also, they're really nice. I've used one once and for working out, it'd be so nice. Like going on a run with, going on a run with one or hiking up the hill with one. Like using more cardio. Anyways, and then I'm also going to Birkenstocks. Oh, yeah, we're both going to spend $500 each to build our own motorcycle. It's like a bike. And you put this motor on it, and it's, it takes like 500 bucks. They're worth 1000 And the spe you can make it really cheap right now because the electric bikes are taking over actual bikes, like, in demand. So you can buy, like, mountain bike tires with disc brakes with a fully nice frame and everything for 200 bucks. So we're going to do that. They can go like 120 miles on three gallons and they, um, what else? They go 50 miles an hour. So I can literally drive over here in that thing, save miles with my car right now. And then we can both have one. And then our friend Gordon, well, Gordon's going to get one too. And we, all we can have, all three of us have these motorcycles basically that are technically bikes and they don't have to register them because they have pedals and they only go 50 miles an hour because the engine is only, uh, 100 cc's and once it's above 150 cc's you have to register and pay hundred dollars a year or whatever so that's once we hit 10k cash each which should happen within the next two months um let's see i think i'm gonna sell all of my crypto it's, right now it's at like 1300 um because i think in april there's gonna be the bitcoin halving having so it's gonna split in half and the crypto is gonna crash all the bull market's gonna be done and that's gonna bull again so i'm gonna sell and then in april when it drops i'll buy low again and then again you know um and then ethan just gave me 2k cash back um i'm gonna start my own projects he has his own project with his two trucks we're gonna have the mg together working on the airbnb and then i come out and work here so we're gonna actually have like a full system <sighs> things are gonna just finally start rolling together and um I have like, I have a 6K blanket for myself. I have um, a $5,000 in a savings invest account and Acorns, the mobile thing. And I have six or $5,000 in a emergency fund account. And then I have 2K cash. What else? Yeah, I think that was it. Yeah, I got the rest of my money invested. So yeah, and then once we both have 10K cash, we're going to do that. And I honestly think it's going to be really soon. Let me see if I can remember all my goals for this year. Um, 10,000 YouTube subscribers, which I totally see as possible. Um, $50,000 net worth, which I totally see as possible. And by 2020, by Christmas of 2025, I want to have $100,000 cash, which I totally think is possible. Especially if I can hit 50k before the end of this year, I can easily turn 50k into 100k within one year. Um, and what else? So 50k, 10k, buy a Porsche and flip it. So at least one it, one time this year, I'm gonna have a Porsche on, on the property, and then we're gonna drive it around a little bit, and then I'll flip it um, and make more money or whatever. I don't know. Um, eventually, my goal is to have one of those really nice old ones from like the 80s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Those are so nice. And the other goal is 1,000 pound club, which I'm really close to. Last night, I almost did a 395 deadlift. I think I said that. Um, and then move out is my other goal of dad's house. There's one more. I already hit 225 bench. I don't know, bro. But that's it for today. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just feeling so joyous today. You know what I mean? Uh, whew, ooh, back crack. Whew, whew. 
Um, yeah. Things are finally starting to align. Stars are aligning. I really hope the video recorded. I'm literally going to cry. All right, peace out. Please, please, please. Yeah, baby. Let's go, it filmed. Goodbye. Last thing really quick. Um, so Ethan and I, like we were, we were on top of the hill and, <coughs> pardon me, while we were up there, we were talking about like, just we were just chatting up for an hour and a half. We were having a great time. And <coughs> we stumbled upon the topic of like, goals for this year and goals right now, where we're going, what we're doing. And then also, oh, I lost my train of thought. Too distracted by vlogging. One second. Do I look shredded? <laughs> oh yeah, so he was saying that him, him, and Gordon were watching one of my videos and they were like laughing at it super hard because they were like, here's this, like, pe random people are gonna watch this video and be like, oh my God, this kid's so smart and so wise. He's like, because they watched the uh, Dogs Get You Women video. And then he was like saying it was so funny and they were laughing the whole time because they'd grown up with me for like the past 10 years. And it's like, they know me and they know me that I'm like low key retarded. <laughs> and I'm just like, like I walk into a room and I'm like, Dude, what's up? And then like, here I am in this video and I'm like, you know, I was thinking, it, it's just so funny. And it just made me, it made me really happy. Cause I'm like, I can totally see myself building a community on here. I mean, I honestly don't care if it happens or not, but like, I could totally see it happening. And like, we're just talking about it and saying like, I bet there's gonna be like one video that just blows up and then like, it just carries on from there. And then I don't know what you're talking about. I'm gonna keep doing my thing. Have a great day. Enjoy the shreds and go go shredded yourself man can you see the chest gains i don't know i'm tweeting out in the garage by myself am i weird or not Ooh, we hear that elbow pop tell me i'm vain full of myself all right i'm tweaking out this is gonna be a video that pops up in 10 years and be like what the hell is this Whatever. all right so that dog used to hate me and like used to try to bite me but I made it love me. And now every, every single day I go from here into the garage, I stop by right here and I come over here and she just jumps up in the wall. <laughs> I cut her. Come here, come here, Dixie. Come here. Yeah, come here, girl. Come here, girl. Yeah, what's up, babies? Oh, we call her Cujo because she tries to eat us. And I'm the only one that she likes, even though Ethan lives here. Do a backflip, do a backflip for me. Come on, do it, come on, do a backflip, come on. All right, whatever. We have all these little dudes. Shut up! Stop! Stop! All the animals are going crazy right now. I don't know. Why. All the baby, all the babies are growing up. And what's this dude up? Oh, what's up, Bubba? Kiss. Kiss. Aww. Anyway, yeah, these things are going crazy. Let me show you the. Uh, let me show you the driveway that we just built. Here's Ethan's completely finished truck that people are already interested in. Like the neighbor who's a scammer, but also works at TAC. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, look, little meow meow. One, two. Look at the little meow meows. Little meow meows are so cute. Oh, there's, they're bad. Here's my car. Nice and beautiful driveway that we're still building. All right, last but not least, we have my favorite. Mamma, come here. Yeah, you trying to find your way over? Sup, baby? Pookie bear. Hey. Oh, come on in, baby. You're my little passenger princess. Hey, come here. Look at you. My spare pen. Yeah. You had your investigation? You still love me? I know you do. Anyway. That's Pookie. She works out with me. She smells my beautiful car, full of farts and perfume and cologne and hubcaps. What are you doing, bro? You want to go home? All right, that's it.